Welcome to The Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This show is about the danger of the tarot cards and it will feature the testimony of my good friend Tina Story. You might be familiar with her testimony if you've looked at my blog and her testimony is also on various websites. Sadly Tina can't be with us today because her brother has just died so please keep Tina in your prayers. We have another friend today, Stephanie Fruget from Louisiana, USA, and she has very kindly offered to read Tina's testimony on her behalf. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Laura. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. I'm excited to be here. Well, I'm excited to have you. I always like to talk to you and yeah, I love your articles and, and videos, so so good to have you today. It's, it's a blessing to be here. I, I'm excited, you know, to, to be used by God like this. It's, it's refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Absolutely. God bless you. Well, Stephanie, please just go ahead and um, read Tina's testimony. Okay, great. Okay, I'm sorry, I was pulling it up on my phone. The danger of the tarot cards. Like many non-Christian families, visiting spiritualists and fortune tellers was our form of spirituality. We simply didn't know any better, and nobody taught us otherwise. From being a teenager, my mother and I visited medium psychics, crystal ball, and tarot card readers. We went to people's houses for sittings to contact the dead and receive messages. We began to attend audiences where one of our favorite mediums would be performing. Mom wasn't enthralled as I was, and on hearing several mediums saying to me, you can do what I'm doing, it encourages you to develop your quote-unquote gift. Unlike my mom, I I became more deeply involved in these practices. What I was most attracted to was the tarot cards. I was more than eager to go out and buy a pack along with some instruction books, and then I began to seek out classes where I could learn properly. I was taught to feel the deck, which I was attracted to, and meditate upon them. I bought different decks of the cards to work with. I loved them. I quickly learned how to read them and started reading for family and friends. They all thought I was good at it and came back for more. I even began to keep a record of their readings on my computer so that I could print it out for them to look back on when predicted events happened in their lives. People loved it. To me, this was just a hobby, nothing I took too seriously, something which me, my friends, and family could enjoy. So I began to develop circles. So I began to develop circles, concentrate on tuning into oneself and picking up any visions we might receive. This was then shared with the group and discussed. We were given exercises to do to develop our abilities, and the leading medium would then make contact and deliver messages to individuals. I became enthralled and went out and bought heaps of different books on self-development, meditations, chakra readings, channeling, etc. I studied them earnestly, eager to develop. We began to have sittings at our house where we would invite several friends or family members to participate in the group, and we would tape record our sittings in order to look back on them as predicted events unfolded. We were hooked. We were hooked. Excuse me. I also began visiting local spiritualist meetings where a clear audience is carried out, which is receiving messages from the dead or having private sittings. I was particularly attracted to the tarot cards and very much looking and very much took to developing this gift and wanted to know all there was to know about them. So this was the line of the occult which I was most focused upon. Although there were some happenings which were quite bizarre, I thought it was fine as no harm came to me whatsoever. Even though I'd read warnings in occult books about receiving a bad spirit, I didn't think it was dangerous as the advice was 
just too simply to ask for it to leave and for a better one to take its place. Everyone who took part in such activities seemed to come to no harm at all, so we continued. In 2006, I was invited on an Alpha course to learn about Christianity. I reluctantly attended, thinking I'm only going for the free cake and coffee. I even, I even sat in, <laughs> no, <that was> funny. <laughs> I even sat near the door so that I could escape. No way were these quote unquote religious nuts getting me to go to church. After all, what could these people know about any, anything spiritual? They had never been to a seance. But very soon the Bible quote spoke to me. The first one which really stood out was, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Something struck a chord, and I just felt that there was truth in this saying. I think I even commented to a friend that this is true. I started to look forward to our weekly sessions and couldn't wait to hear more Bible quotes and learn about Jesus. I began to realize that these people were actually normal and very loving. They still welcomed me, even though I would not felt very friendly towards them when I first arrived. These Christians seemed full of love and seemed to have a happiness about them, which I wanted. I didn't want the course to finish, so I attended another one and went through it all again. It was even better the second time around. I, I then began to attend the Methodist church. Two years later, in the spring of 2008, I became a member of my Methodist church. However, I still had my tarot cards, still thinking there was no harm in them whatsoever. It was my friend who advised me to get rid of them, telling me if I called myself a Christian, I shouldn't be dabbling with those things. I eventually agreed and decided to get rid of my tarot cards and decided to give 100% to the God who had already shown me that he is pure love. I hadn't read the tarot cards for other people for a few years, but was aware that I still had them in the back of the cupboard. As far as I was concerned, I had stopped dabbling in the occult as I had stopped going to classes and circles and visiting mediums, etc. I only occasionally just got the cards out just to read for myself, maybe once a year or so. I also still had all the occult books that I had bought. I didn't realize how vital it was that I get rid of everything which tied me to the occult. It was after getting rid of them that there were several strange happenings. I began to feel the presence of a spirit which kept visiting me between May and August. I realized the cards had actually connected me with something as I started to feel a presence which kept coming to me very often, almost weekly. It came at any time out of out shopping at work, sitting on a bus when I was fully awake. I guess it was because I had finally broken the connection and it was trying to, to keep it. I got used to it being around and I wasn't frightened at all. I couldn't determine who it was, just a definite energy. In physical terms, I guess I could describe it as being aware of a small area of fog, although it is impossible to physically describe the non-physical. There was even a time when it came while I was reading my Bible at home. At this point, I still didn't realize it was evil, and I actually welcomed it, wondering who it was as it wasn't giving me any identity. My welcome made it had become more vibrant. I could feel an increase in its vibration. It sometimes came to me while I was at work. I told the cook about it, and she was convinced I must have a guardian angel watching over me because it wasn't anything frightening. One time, I was in a client's room. I had worked in a care home. While she was chatting to me, I felt its presence to be in the direction of the corridor. I didn't tell the old dear as I didn't want to frighten her. At first, its presence made me feel calm because... I became familiar with this vibration. As the weeks went by, it became stronger, and in its presence, I could feel its energy blending more with mine. My body would feel quite heavy. I began to feel incredibly nauseous when it was around, and my mind felt spaced out. To describe the spirit as an area of fog, you would think of it as something separate from yourself, but because it came on an energetic level, it affects your own energy and therefore affects how you feel. The final time was the strongest in August. It was it was at Holy Communion at the church. I was in the kitchen filling up the thimbles for the communion. I felt its presence very strongly. Even though the place was busy, people talking to me, distractions, I knew something was there and nobody else seemed to be aware of it. It seemed to strongly touch my mind, the very point at which I think I was strongly emphasized. As I walked to the front door of the church to the place the communion thimbles at the table, there was, a, there was a familiar feeling of it blending with me. So I sat down, and this was more than being calm. I could hardly move out of the chair. My body was so very heavy. My mind was extremely spacey. 
someone came to me, someone came and asked me to serve the cups of tea after the service. I immediately answered, I'd love to, but normally I would have hesitated as I'm quite a shy person. But when I answered, it felt like it wasn't quite me controlling my voice. The words just came, although I was, although I was aware that it still sounded like me. As the service began and everyone started to sing, I felt the presence beginning to fade. I was also then able to stand and sing. The presence quickly faded away. I realized afterwards that this was the beginnings of something wanting to take possession of my faculties. This was the beginnings of something evil forcing me into, into trance against my will. Over the next few weeks, I became frightened and very upset, not knowing when it was going to come back, obviously wondering how I could get rid of it. I rang my church and made an appointment not knowing what to do. But days later, I canceled the appointment as I realized that it, it had decided to leave me alone and it has never been back. Thank goodness. I can only assume it was because I was in the presence of Jesus in that Holy Communion service and it fled. What more proof do we need of Jesus saving us? Jesus said, for where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them. Matthew eighteen twenty. There was a whole congregation there singing to him. There was definitely something in the church that day which got rid of this spirit. That is absolutely amazing. Spirits flee in his presence. It has happened. I know. It's so awesome. It's wonderful. I remember walking to work in the mornings and taking my occult books with me to throw them away in the waste bin at the top of the street, and I eventually got rid of them all. I repeated the Lord's Prayer under my breath all the way to work for many days afterwards. The Church of England employs at least one exorcist in every diocese in the country. I renounced my involvement with the occult and I renounced my involvement with the occult with the exorcist in my area. Knelt before the cross, I was anointed with the holy oil blessed by the archbishop, and people laid hands on me and prayed as I read aloud my renouncement. To say sorry to Jesus was very special and I'm so glad I did this. I now realize what was beginning to happen to me and how much worse it could have been. If this spirit had been around any longer, I dare to say our house would have become haunted and heaven knows what it, what it would have made me do. People who are into any form of occult practices and think it, it is safe or nice. Oh, sorry. People who are into any form of occult practices and think it is safe are nice, well-meaning people but they don't know that they are deceived victims of Satan. You think you are fine, that there's nothing to worry about, until you try to turn away from it. Yeah. This, yeah, and then Satan's demon will show their true colors, start to harass you, and keep, want to keep a hold on your soul. These spirits are demonic, and they want to destroy your life. It is not just the truth for me. I am not just one person who has had bad experience, experiences. It is the truth for everyone. I have since read other people's testimonies who were previously involved in the occult practices, and they all say the same thing. They discovered the spirits that they were connected to were evil, not our dead relatives at all, and were saved by Jesus Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising, then, of his servants masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve, 2 Corinthians 11, 14-15. Anyone who becomes involved in the occult practices will connect themselves to evil entities. You call them up. You called Satan. He will come. I learned how spirit entities have the ability to reveal or conceal themselves to whoever they choose, wherever they choose, whatever you're doing, whoever you're with, and at whatever time you choose. It is dangerous. I knew Christianity was what I had been looking for all my life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This struck a chord with me instantly. How fantastic. Knowing Jesus is far more fulfilling than the false spirituality of the occult. Amen to that. <laughs> Satan, can, <laughs> Satan can only provide a limited satisfaction. He does not love you and is only out to destroy you. Jesus brings love. He loves us and wants to transform our lives. He improves our relationships. He gives us strength to deal with our struggles in life. He changes the way that we see things. He wants a relationship with us. And you begin to see his blessings as, as you become aware of him working in your life. I am now a member of a Methodist church. I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever of the existence of God and totally accept our Lord Jesus Christ as our only hope and deliverer from demonic spirits. 
God has proved to me that he exists, and he is more powerful than evil, and that evil spirits flee, flee from him. I have felt the pure, perfect love of God, even before I became a Christian. God is an absolutely pure, powerful, beautiful love with a deep, deep sympathy, which totally wipes out all worries, fears, and anxieties. I want nothing but God in every part of my life. To devote my life to God, I live every second of every day for him and always will. God is the protector of our souls. Praising him here glorifies him in the heavenly realms. Do not turn to mediums or, or seek out spiritualists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 19.31 And John 8.32 You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. Such an awesome testimony. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Stephanie, it's just absolutely beautiful. And um, I just love the way Tina just loves the Lord so much. And and she just explains it all so well for, for people who who are maybe still doing these things. She just really, you know, details it just perfectly, I think. She's very good at, at explaining it all. She really is. Um, and she's right. She has the, she had the same experience as any, any of us who have previously been in the occult and, and come to know Jesus personally. Um, you know, once, once we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and receive the Holy Spirit of, of the living God, it clears up all the confusion. Um when we're in the occult and we're dabbling with things of of the occult, witchcraft, tarot cards, um, even pornography is is a gateway. Ouija boards, um, New Age books, um, rosary beads, Santeria beads. There, there's all kinds of things of the occult that you know that I had in my house that I didn't realize. You know, demons were actually attached to these things, yeah. and they. Uh, they brought on confusion, depression, suicidal thoughts. Um, they did, They almost destroyed my life. And, uh, you know, I really felt in my spirit when I was praying earlier that, that God has a message, especially for people who are already saved. This is, this is for the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. He told me to boldly tell you. That horoscopes, tarot cards, angel cards, numerology, any form of metaphysics, esoteric, occult practices, stop. Because if people are wondering, you know, where's God in my life? Why isn't he moving in my life? Because you have to show your devotion and your want and your desire to have a relationship with him by getting rid of things that are of Satan. Mm -hmm. And I and, and I read a lot of the comments and, and things um, on your page, and I've received them on my testimony as well. And I hear people saying, well, I'm afraid to get rid of that stuff. And you shouldn't be afraid to get rid of that stuff. You should be afraid to keep it. You're yeah. in the, If you have that stuff right now, you're in the most dangerous position that you could possibly be in. Yeah, it's like having, keeping poison in your, in your drink, you know, throw it out, get rid of it. It is, you know, all the Doreen Virtue angel cards and all these pretty angel boards and the pink Ouija boards and, and all, the, you know, even rosary beads. They're, they're Santeria beads, ultimately, which is voodoo. Uh -huh. And and all this stuff looks pretty, but like the Bible says, the, the Satan masquerades as an angel of light. But when you start proclaiming the name of Jesus out loud around this stuff and you start getting rid of it, you know, the these pretty little angels, you know, which are demons, they start showing their true colors. And that's how you know when that's how you test the spirit. If if the spirit does not submit to and, and believe that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh and that he, you know, that he died and rose again, that spirit's not of God. And you've got to get rid of that stuff in your house. You know, you can't you can't sit there and doubt and question God and, and whatnot while serving satan at the same time we can't serve two masters definitely stephanie and, and you know you know i left that world 19 years ago and i still hear to this day people who tested the spirits whether it was with their tarot cards whether it was with their tea leaf reading any form of divination you know they've realized i should test this in the name of jesus christ and when they've done that you know that the spirits have turned up and acted demonic and nasty towards them and even that proved to them hey 
these spirits are getting really violent at the name of Jesus Christ. Well, that says it all, really. Um, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I can feel in my spirit right now God's anger, his righteous anger at this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can feel that. But he also put a question on my heart to to ask believers, you know, who are keeping these these things in their home and in their lives, you know, question yourself. Why are you doing that? Like, what's your motive for, for messing with tarot cards in the first place? You know, are you seeking the truth? Is it just fun to you? Or, you know, really question, really question your motives on it. Because if you're seeking the truth, why in the world would you go to Satan instead of God? Mm -hmm. You know, why would it be so hard for you to make a decision? You, you, cho you know, God says, choose this day whom you will serve. You either serve the creator God or you serve Satan. You have to make a decision. It's not hard to get rid of tarot cards and occult stuff. You either burn it or you throw it away. That's yeah. not hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> we didn't do the hard part. Jesus did it. You know, he did everything. And if you truly claim to be a Christian and believe on his name, get rid of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Or, or God's going to throw you to the wolves because if you choose Satan, he doesn't owe you anything. Mm -hmm. and, you he, know? and Satan just wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And the Bible does say, my people, um, you know, perish through lack of knowledge. So, yeah. uh, you know, and I think perhaps sometimes, perhaps Christians go into these things because they want to know their future and things like that. Well, it's, you know, it's all in the Bible. <laughs> it's in the Bible. You know, your your ultimate future is to be with the Lord, uh, and and on this earth, if if you get closer and closer to Jesus, if you walk with Jesus every day, you know, really walk with Jesus, really get to know Him better and better. Doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian, you can always know Him even deeper and deeper. When you do that, you'll hear his voice far more clearly, and he'll tell you, he'll show you what to do. He'll give exactly. you answers. He'll give you the wisdom that you're searching for, and it's coming from him. It's coming from the God of love and, and not from the, the God of evil and uh, lies. That's right. That's um, exactly right. Yeah, so get closer to Jesus, and he'll, he'll tell you what to do with your life. You don't need to hear doctrines of, of demons. Um, and I think as well, I'd like to just remind listeners that Tina's testimony is on my blog. It's on a few other websites. And it's also on a website called newagedeception.wordpress.com. And that's run by an ex-medium friend of ours. And on that um, blog, if you go to it and type Tina's name in the search the testimony will come up and also under it you'll see lots of comments from Christians and folks who uh, are, are still doing tarot cards and you'll see the, the conversations and the discussions that happen there and even take part if you're a Christian with a, a heart to reach out to, to these folks um, you know please please take part and Stephanie, you yourself have, have had a look at that page and um, you've you've got some comments to make yourself that, that hopefully will, will help folks. Um, yeah, we just need to, I mean, you know, God, God's real simple about it. We just, we need to put away the things of Satan. Just spiritually cleanse your home. You know, get rid of that stuff. Um, tell God, you know, you're sorry and just really... Just really seek him, you know, because the Holy Spirit is is, is your everything. You're everything spiritual. He is everything that your spirit and your soul has been searching for while you were dabbling in witchcraft and the new age and all that other stuff. Like you said, Lord, Jesus is going to answer everyone's questions and he'll give you the absolute truth. So <clears throat> it just seems like. I mean, God will put people in your life to give you messages and things like that. But a lot of people are seeking out, um, you know, carnal minded Christians advice or, or religious advice and things like that. The Bible says that you need no man to teach you. Mm -hmm. All you need is God. That's yeah. it. And, yeah. the, and the scriptures will tell you the truth about it. But God says to study the word to show yourself a proof to him. So, I mean, Christianity, it's. 
it's not this religious nonsense that the world has made it out to be. It, it is truly a daily lifestyle, you know, and it, and it doesn't make us perfect people because only Jesus was perfect, but it makes us covered by his blood. And therefore, we have the, the right to approach God in prayer at any time, you know, that that's one of God's promises. But to stay connected to that, you know, you've got to. You've got to make the effort to, to get rid of the things of the occult in your home. It, it's it's appalling to me, to be honest with you, to see the witchcraft and the just the, the new age nonsense mixed, mixed in with the church because it shows that Christians, a lot of Christians are not studying their Bible for themselves because in Revelations, Jesus says himself, he says, I hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. If our God says that he hates something, it is worth looking into because, <laughs> I mean, that that's some hate is a strong word. And Jesus doesn't hate the Nicolaitans. He hates the deeds of them. And if you research what the Nicolaitans were, in summary, it's the mixture of paganism and Christianity. He hates it because it has created a weak form of Christianity, and we have powerless, spiritually powerless churches. There's most of them are spiritually dead, mm-hmm. and 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 they they I've been to several of them locally that they're teaching from the Bible, but they're not spirit led, and then they mix in like either secular stories that are not even spiritual analogies, and then they'll mix in you know paganism with it. Like, a lot of people in the Christian body of Christ don't like to hear this, but Christmas and Easter, they're wors- it's worship of pagan gods. It has nothing to do with Jesus. Yeah. Nothing yeah. to do with it. And, the, you know, the pagans know that, and, and, and pagans and, and witches and, and people will, will laugh at us thinking, ha-ha, you think you're worshipping Jesus doing these things when it's... Exactly! Yeah. Like... You know, we go around wanting to to bring people to Christ, but yet we're practicing, you know, paganism at the same time. We can't do that. You know, we've got to we've got to seek out the truth and the truth is in the scriptures. You know, the body of Christ will start doing our job and we will be, you know, doubly anointed with the Holy Spirit and the power of God once we start coming together and serving him in one accord. But that can't happen until each individual member and Christian starts studying the word for themselves and seeking God's face every day. Yeah. You know, we, we keep trying to do this stuff ourselves you know it's christianity is not about us it's about him and his will and we trust him because we know that our god is good and we know that he wants the best for people and only he can do that but we have to get rid of ourselves and the only way to do that is to gain discernment and and godly wisdom and all the gifts of god through reading his word you know, ourselves. It's great to fellowship with other believers. We're supposed to do that. But if your church is spiritually dead and they don't actually believe in in the word of God, get out of there. Mm -hmm. Like, leave. You know, there's just so much satanic oppression going on in religious churches nowadays because they don't allow, you know, God, God already established his order of the church in the Bible, it's in Ephesians 4, you know, it, he calls and anoints the, the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, evangelists, and teachers. It's the fivefold ministry. But how many churches actually have the fivefold ministry operating in their church? It's not many. And when we don't have those people, you know, God anointed people, God's already called them. They know who they are. A lot of us won't even go to religious churches because they think we were crazy, you know, but, but we get our... Our wisdom and knowledge from the reading. So, just what I really wanted people who are already believers get in the Word of God, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, and receive His revelation from this because it, it empowers you through the Holy Spirit to be able to gain discernment and things, you know, things like that where you're not seeking out every wind of doctrine to try to figure out how to gain godly peace in your life go straight to the source you know yeah, absolutely you know it, the people if they look at anyone in the bible who was close to close to the lord and heard his voice so clearly any one of us um, can become like that it's nothing to do with any of us being special it's, that's it's, right it's the Holy that's Spirit, exactly right you know and how do you get there it's, as you say daily obedience 
uh, deaf to the selfish desires following Jesus. Um, and it's not that he is, um, he, he, as you say, he's a good God. He wants the best for us. Therefore, when he tells us all the way through the Bible not to get into witchcraft, spiritualism, um, occult practices, paganism, it's not that he's a killjoy and, you know, wants to stop your no, fun. He's, it, you he's know, protecting you. He's protecting you because he knows it's like a loving, a loving parent saying to a child, don't, please don't put your hands in the fire because it's dangerous and you'll get burned. So, That's yeah, right. Yeah, and God's way is better. The, the mm -hmm. spiritual gifts and things that people are, seek, people are seeking because we're all, every member of the body of Christ has spiritual gifts. You can read about them in 2 Corinthians uh, it's either 12 or 14, but it talks about the gifts of the spirit and they are imparted, you know, God chooses and gives you the gifts and it says to seek the best gifts. Where's that drive within people who are kind of seeking this stuff out there, their passion through the new age and, you know, they're looking to learn more about the supernatural. That's that's God instilling that passion in your heart. You're just looking in the wrong place for it. Yeah, like yeah. It's, Satan's kingdom is a total counterfeit to God's kingdom. So Satan will tell you a thousand lies just to, I mean, a thousand truths just to get you to believe one lie. Mm -hmm. So the people who are desiring these spiritual gifts, God wants to give them to you and you may already have them, but you're only going to get the, the absolute just clear truth through, through his word. So I just, I just suggest, you know, encourage people to, to pray about this, repent from the occult stuff, get rid of those demons. They have no place in your home. None. You, you don't deserve, God does not want you being oppressed and depressed and confused and all this hell in your life. You know, that's why God says, just get rid of it now and then ask the Holy Spirit to, to lead you to your next step of what you need to do. Absolutely. And, you know, at, at time and time again, well, my own life, for example, when I came to Christ, um, I had to have deliverance or exorcism. And the, the psychic powers and abilities, they all left when the demons were cast out. So that was proof itself that those demonic abilities came from Satan. They didn't come from God. But in time, as I got to know the Holy Spirit, he gave me his gifts of healing um, as you said, the Bible talks about gifts of prophecy, gifts of casting out demons, gifts of tongues. So, you know, Jesus and his disciples raised the dead, they, they healed the sick, they cast out demons. And that is available for us today as Christians. So, you know, that if people are doing the occult things because of that hunger they have, as you say, God gives us that hunger because he wants us to be like Jesus, to go out and heal the sick. Um, right. And far better to do it his way that, than um, to do it under the influence of, of, of demons. Yeah, because the demons, they're not telling you the truth anyways. Like, I see a lot of Christians practicing astrology, but, and there's a difference between astronomy and astrology. You know, yeah. astrology is actually a science of the study of, of, you know, the stars and whatnot. Astrology was developed out of mystery Babylon religion and even the astronomers ha have shown that over the last 2,000 years, you know, everything has shifted anyways in yeah. degrees. So yeah. people are reading their signs and, oh, I'm a, I'm a Aries or I'm a Pisces. You know, no, you're not. Like, you're not even getting an accurate picture yeah, because shifting. shifted. So <laughs> yeah. it's ridiculous. You know, they did a, um, they did like some research and they, they gave 10 different astrologers the same reading and they got 10 different readings from it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's Satan's, he's full of it. He is absolutely full of it. And he, you know, don't give him, don't close the door on him. Now is the time for the body of Christ to, to rise up in the Holy spirit and quit giving the devil a place in your life, an obvious place. We have enough to deal with already in our personal lives and our, you know, process of sanctification. Why even open yourself up to witchcraft? I mean, come on. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and God is a loving God, but if, if they, if you keep doing it and you, because because God forgives us if we're if we're deceived and we go to Him and we're like oh my God God I didn't know I'm sorry that's when God God's grace applies but if someone's hearing this now and and 
there are, there are a couple people that, that the Holy Spirit is speaking through me directly to you right now. Mm-hmm. So if you're feeling that spirit rising up in, in you right now, this is for you. If you know the truth now about it, you make a decision. You get rid of it or God's going to chastise you. If yeah, not, yeah. put you aside, period, because it's your choice. You know, God is a loving God, and he wants us to free willingly choose to love him. So now is the time to make a decision. Absolutely, Stephanie. And, and you know, um, the Bible does say choose life. You know, you look at Deuteronomy and the lists of blessings and curses. God has told us plainly what activities will, will curse us and what activities will bless us he's given us that cho- choice and it's free will if, if we choose to disobey him um you know those curses will come from the demons and, well god, um, cur- god sends curses as well mm-hmm. and and you know it's as you were saying in the bible in the old testament all through the old testament you know the prophets of God were constantly warning the people about the dangers of, of witchcraft, about astrologers. That word is in there. So when Christians read that in the Bible, don't they see the word astrology? Do, you know, do they just skip over it? Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. And look at the, the Witch of Endor and the whole thing about the conversation meant to be between Saul and Samuel that was obviously a demon you know, and, and what happened to Saul? You know, he died. Um, the Lord's blessing and protection was lifted off his life. Yep. So, yeah, these things are, are, are actually deadly. It's um, The Bible tells us that quite quite plainly. So he does, he does warn people because he does want them to be set free. That's right. And, and <clears throat> the beginning of wisdom comes from fear of the Lord. And I think a lot of people, and I don't mean to be harsh about this, it's just, it, it comes out, I didn't make up the Bible. You know, God yeah. inspired his prophets through the Holy Spirit to write write these truths. And yeah, fear God. God created good and evil. And he will, if we keep disobeying him and serving other gods and all these idols and practicing witchcraft, he will take his hand and his protection off your life. You will be thrown to the wolves. God does use evil and demons to... Uh, to show you, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, because after I don't mean I, I don't mean this in a rude way. I just want to be blunt with people that because I went through it and I don't want them to go through this. I, I I hope they make the decision to go. I hope they've already gotten up and thrown that crap out of their house already. You know, I hope they have a little fire lit in their garage right now, throwing yeah. that crap in there because it will defile you and it will separate you from God. God will take his hand and his protection off your life. And it will be no one's fault but your own. Mm-hmm. Well, so it's true. I could... It's true all through the Old Testament. You see it time and time again when, when the children of God backslid into the occult activities of their neighbors. Yeah, the, their lives really went downhill, didn't it? And, you know, my mother committed suicide mm-hmm. because of these things. And, you know, I, I had hell with it. So we're not trying to be holier than now and dictate, no, you know. No, not at all. We're no, sharing I, my, because my we care. That's right. And we don't want people to go through what, what we suffered. Um, I think as well it's interesting because sometimes people say to me, well, okay, uh, I'll not do the tarot cards, but what about angel oracle readings or what about fairy They're, they're not angels. Card- the bottom line yeah. is they're not angels. They are mm-hmm. demons. If, you, if people could only see the true face of these ugly, hateful, they hate you. They're not there to help you. They're, they're going to tell you, you know, a, a thousand truths, and then they're going to implant one lie in you, and it, it could be demonic possession even. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, it's... <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's where I'm coming from. It's like it's like a, a godly righteous anger. It's not because I feel holier than thou because God no. knows it. Mm-hmm. How God knows. It's just that it was so you know, I lost my boyfriend to suicide. I almost killed myself. Yeah. Like and that's not what God wants for us. God wants to give us his his, his love, his hope, his peace, you know, and his joy and his his gifts, spiritual gifts on our lives so that we can edify others and help bring other people into the kingdom, you know, and, and, and do what we're called to do. It, it, I, I just feel, 
I just feel righteous anger out of out of the hurt because the ignorance and the willingness to be ignorant in the in the body of Christ right now, it's got to stop. Yeah. Like it's it's ridiculous. You know, we've got ISIS following their Quran. You know, they're not extremists. They're really good Muslims. They follow their Quran to the T yeah. and therefore they're obviously a powerful force. Mm-hmm. What the heck is the body of Christ doing sitting around practicing paganism? Uh-huh. And then sit and we wonder, well, where's God? Why is God letting this happen? He's not. We are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, exactly. You know, it's lukewarmness and it's, it's you know, laziness. And yes. just to, to recap what, what I was saying there, whether it's angel cards, fairy cards, um, whether it's uh, even cards that have got pictures of Bible characters on it or Bibles of, you know, pictures of Jesus on it, even, even it's still divination. Um, and some Christians don't realize that. Because as you say, it's, it's demonic, it's not the true angels. And years ago, I mean, I'm talking way back years ago, if you look down through the ages, the, the history of tarot cards, for example, Ouija boards and spiritualism and mediumship, many mediums used to say, do not touch tarot cards, do not touch Ouija boards. The mediums and the psychics would say, you know, yeah, let's talk to spirits, but don't use those things because that's of the dark side. That's the black arts. Um, don't open those doors. And yet nowadays it's like a 360 degree turn where many mediums are now saying, oh, tarot guards, you know, and Ouija boards are good for contacting spirits. So it's interesting because when fashion changes, even uh, spiritual fads um changes then people go along with it and people don't realize you know that generations ago mediums would avoid it they would avoid the tarot cards so why are christians even doing things that years ago mediums you know would avoid it's just people it's ignorance people don't research they don't look at the origins of things check out the christians will send me messages and say laura what do you think of yoga what do you think of reiki should i go get it done and i'll say check out yourself the origins exactly (laughs) where did these things come from yeah i'm sure the people that invented it were, were lovely people but i bet you they had spirit guides i bet you they talked to um, spirits and you know did all these things so is that coming from the holy spirit no no and and, and you know god says he'll send a strong delusion like you know if we seek out things like that god allows us you know a demonic spirit to come over and make us spiritually deaf dumb and blind mm-hmm. because it's a choice you know like there's nothing that we can do to earn salvation or anything like that like jesus has paid it all and it's and it's all about him but we have to make conscious decisions in our life according to to what we learn from the word that's why the bible was left to to us christians because it it it's a sword it slices down right to the truth you know and and but we've got to pick it up and read it like it's so simple it's it's frustrating to me because <laughs> it's like th- this stuff isn't hard it's really not you know you either serve god or you serve satan choose, choose today because a lot of the the defilement going on in, in our in our lives it's because of sins that we're choosing to do yeah and it's you know it's time for the body of christ to come together and work in unity you know and keep our eyes focused on jesus he's the head you know the mem- we're the body of christ god told it told me to rise in christ and it's all about allowing his holy spirit to flow through us you know like in the book of acts I mean, they brought down the house with the Holy Spirit there because they were also, you know, praising him and serving him in one accord. And thousands and thousands of people got saved because they saw the power of God, you know, and in the book of, um, is it Haggai? I I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it says the glory of the latter house shall be greater than, than then. God has a serious blessing and an anointing on this latter-day body of Christ, but we've got to wake up and come out of this this spiritualism and occultism and all this other stuff. Yeah, it, totally, it's- totally. And, you know, as you say, we, we reap what we sow. If you're going to play um, with games of, of demons, then you're going to sow, 
hell and havoc into your life. And okay. I, I, I just remembered there um, years ago a woman told me she, she read tarot cards and, and she said every time she brought the tarot cards out and laid them on her table, she had a couple of dogs and they would run out the room with their tails between their legs because, <laughs> you know, they sensed obviously they sense the demons so she knew that was a warning sign but she was too fascinated um you know to give it up um so and i think as, as well stephanie as you say we're living in dangerous times these are the last days we're going to see more persecution we're going to see more beheadings and am i a prophet no you just have to look in the book of revelation to see that it's coming it's going to get global so christians have to get strong in the lord and, and throw out the garbage that's right that's because we're right. going to have to face these times and maybe one of us you know maybe we will be facing persecution or beheading ourselves so you know let's get strong in the lord and, and throw out the demonic stuff that's right and, and and people need to stop stop convincing themselves that every person that dies goes to heaven that's not true mm -hmm. It's, it's, you know, Jesus preached more about hell than he did about, about heaven. And a third of his ministry was casting out demons. Like people just seem to kind of want to ignore that and they want to attend funerals and whatnot. And I've, I've been to, to, I stopped going to funerals, but I've attended many of them that they're like, oh, you know, they're, they're in heaven. Well, are you sure? You know, are you really sure? Because if they didn't believe in Jesus Christ for who he was, they're not in heaven. And that that is a sad reality of it. And if we Jesus says if we deny him, you know, and we if we deny we don't make the choice to serve him right now, today, you know, it, if that time comes, which it is coming, persecution on Christians in America is coming very soon, you know, and. If you don't have the Holy Spirit and you're not walking in this under the shadow of the Almighty God, you're not going to have the strength to stand up to it. You're not going to have the strength to endure it. And you may end up denying God, you know, in order to save your life or, or whatever. But you're going to lose your soul, you know. And it's not just about you. It's your family. It's the, your friends. You know, you, you want eternal life for everybody. So it's just time to get right with the Lord now, you know, and, and do what we're called to do. Because if, if the body of Christ comes together now and we bring down the Holy Spirit in one accord, that's God. Like all the forces of darkness cannot stop God. So if we want to do something about all this evil, we got to start reading the Bible and doing what it says. Totally, and as you say, you know, and there's Christian prophets all around the world who are prophesying that the days of persecution are, are going to get stronger. So, um, you know, rather than be meddling in, in paganism and all that, get out there and, and, and show these guys the love of Jesus. Speak right. to the witches, speak to the mediums, speak to the pagans. Show them the love of Jesus. Let them know that, that he wants to save them. Um, so that they can go to heaven too, that he loves them. You know, that's what we're called to do. We're called to be salt and light. We're called to be light in the darkness. And yeah, let, let's get on with the Great Commission and, and instead of uh, dabbling in stuff. That's right. I mean, you got to ask, are, are you, have you casted out demons? Are we healing the sick? Are we prophesying, speaking in tongues, you know, interpreting them? Which we all have different gifts. I'm not saying that yeah. each has to do all of that you know mm -hmm. god will build to you what your gifts are but if we're not operating in the gifts of the spirit what are you, what are you doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know don't don't call yourself a christian and go around preaching jesus to people because they're not going to hear you because they don't they don't care that the bible says that his power isn't is not in word but in doing it you know like we have to show the work of god show the holy spirit to people you know cast out demons from these people you know we're everybody's like praying to god and, and trying to rub this little genie lamp oh god please heal this person as a christian that's your job to go lay hands on that person and bring the power of the holy spirit over them and jesus will heal them exactly. it's just about it's just about faith you know all this discord among the body of christ and all this theology arguments and stuff it, it it's got to stop. And all this unbelief, you know, we either believe in the power of God or we don't, mm -hmm. period. We, if we claim to believe on Jesus, start seeking out what your spiritual gifts are, but seek it through the Holy Spirit. Any other way, you're, it's, it's of Satan, you know, but you can be clear on 
what's of God and what's not by comparing it to the scriptures. Absolutely. That's that's the ultimate yeah. test. Um, definitely. So we're, we're almost at the end now, Stephanie, and that was just really wonderful um, talking with you today. So I'm just going to repeat the name of that website so that people can go read Tina's testimony again and um, maybe even take part in the discussion there about, about tarot cards. So the website is called newagedeception.wordpress.com and type Tina in the search and it will take you to that page about the tarot cards. And Stephanie, thanks so much. I'd really love to have you on again in, in future Thank shows. Thank you so much for having me. I, I just really enjoy talking to you and, and just, I just really respect what you're doing in ministry and, and you know, you're, you're in my prayers all the time. Oh, thank you. I really do appreciate that. And, and I respect you too. And I love your te testimony. And yeah, it's just, it's just awesome how the, the Lord connects people together around the world. And yeah, brothers and sisters in the Lord. It's a blessing, and God, God, there's a big harvest of people coming in. I know there, there's several people that are listening, and the Holy Spirit's just all over them right now. You know, they're feel, they're really feeling this, and, um, you know, they may even be feeling confusion from it because, I mean, this is a spiritual war. You, you've got God and Satan fighting over your soul right now. Yeah. You know, yeah. so just, just I encourage people just to, to pray with us here in a minute. Just come into agreement with the prayer and let God work. You know, like we don't we don't have to do anything. It's not up to us. Jesus has already done it. All we have to do is, is pray and believe, and that's it. Like our 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 mission is simple. You know, God God is not mixed among confusion and all of the confusion that, that may have been brought in your life. You just need to know that that's not of God. That's Satan messing with you, and it's time for you to be delivered. Like God, God wants you to be delivered. He wants to fill you with this Holy Spirit so you can go out and you can start bringing people into his kingdom and showing people that God is love. You know, he really is. But we, we've got to get right with him. And it's just all about our submission to him, you know. Totally. Um, Stephanie, I would love it if you would now pray and pray. You know, there may be mediums listening to this or pray for them or pray for, for Christians who are maybe doing these things and pray for their salvation, pray for their deliverance, just whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to pray. Okay, I'd love to. Thank you. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you for Laura. Thank you for, for Tina's testimony. And I ask you, I lift up her family to you. Um, you know what's going on, God. And I ask you just to give give them your, your, your peace that surpasses all understanding. Bless Laura's ministry. Heal her body, Lord. And, and I believe that you will in Jesus' name. And Lord, all these people that are listening right now, I ask you to just Bring your Holy Spirit upon them so powerfully that, that your power cannot be denied in their life. Deliver them, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, I command any demon around them, confusing them, whispering in their ear, you go back to where the Holy Spirit sends you right now. You have to go in the name of Jesus right now. Leave them alone. They are God's kid. You don't belong in their home anymore. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you and we praise your holy name and we thank you for your blood and we thank you for your word. And, and, and your word says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I ask you to bring these souls into your kingdom, God. Save them. Save them. Open their minds. Open their hearts to you. Bring them to their knees. Bring them to, to tears. Give them healing. Give them what you want to give them, Lord. Bring them into your kingdom. And in, in the name of Jesus, I break every chain and every power of the occult that the devil thinks that he has he has already lost and he's going back to hell because the body of christ is rising up in the holy spirit right now in jesus name i pray amen amen, amen. hallelujah Girl, i feel Stephanie. fire of god like yeah, <laughs> god is just trying to pull everybody in right now and pull everybody together it's just so awesome it's like oh, it's about time <laughs> amen amen <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, that's us run out of time, so please check out Stephanie's testimony and Tina's testimony on my blog as well, and tune in again next time. Thank you so much, Stephanie.
Thank you so much. And if anybody would like to contact me with questions, my email is stephaniefruge at hotmail.com. It's S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E-F-R-U-G-E at hotmail.com. I'd be happy to help you how I can. And thank you so much, Laura. I love you. God bless you. I love you too. Thank you so much. Goodbye, everyone. Until next time, and God bless you. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful. It takes a great deal of time and resources to prepare, produce, record, and broadcast our programs to listeners in over 60 countries around the world. Our potential audience is much larger, and Eternal Radio can now be heard all around the world, online, on tablet, on smartphone, and on TV. If you would like to help us continue broadcasting sounds to energize your faith, together with the message of God's love for all mankind around the world, please prayerfully consider making a donation. From your mobile phone, simply text ELCM02, followed by your donation preference of £3, £5 or £10 to 70070. Thank you for listening.